What up YouTube, a true hero back with another video. And today we're playing Lice Sworn. Not Christian Sworn, just pure Lice Sworns. You know, sometimes you go to a pizza shop and you don't want pepperoni, you don't want sausage. You just want plain cheese, you know, extra cheese. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Now, with that said, everybody knows pepperoni and sausage pizza is far superior to cheese pizza. What I'm saying is, if you didn't get it through this, you know, analogy, Christian Swarns are the superior deck. We can even see at the previous ribbit, two decks out of the top eight were Christian Swarns. But that's not to say that we can sleep on pure Light Swarns. Sometimes milling a wolf is just good enough. So you see, we're playing Triple Wolf and Triple Herald. Now, in previous versions of Light Swarm deck, Herald of Orange Light is not played. But the card's too good. It's too crack not to play. And even though we're not playing Solar Purity of Orange Light and Christia, there's still tons of targets. You have Triple Herald, Double Honest, and Triple Celeste. So our goal today isn't to win, right? Because winning comes easy. Our goal today is try to make an opponent rage. That's all we want to do. Is we want our opponents to rage to rage quick and call us a sack, you know? Sometimes it's our day, sometimes it's our time, you know? It's our time to play a casino deck and savage others and not be the one who gets savage. So, you know, hopefully it's our day. But yeah, Light Swarms, I definitely think that they're a really good deck. Uh, often overshadowed by Christian Swarm because Christian Swarm is just better, you know what I mean? It's just better. And when you drop a Christia on someone, they can't play the game. Whereas Light Swarms, they never put you in a situation where like you can't play the game. Like, yes, you can be in like really like hard to out situations. Like JD being like 3026, he's really hard to deal with, right? But like if someone drops a JD on you, you still can play the game. But if someone drops Christian on you, like, good luck. You better have Mirror Force Torrential or, you know, whatever else you need. So anyway, we're not gonna draw a wolf today. Oh, well, never mind. As soon as I say we're not going to draw a wolf, we draw in our opening hand. And this hand's kind of nutty. Obviously, it depends on what we mill, right? Because uh, if we don't get some good mills, then this hand's pretty dead. Uh, but so far, so far, so very nice, right? We got a name. We're not going to card destruction, obviously, because then we lose both our big boys, both our big daddy JDs. So we're just going to set Raiko and hope Raiko does the, does the most, you know? And uh, hopefully we don't get like first turn Caius out of nowhere because then we'll be really sad. The cool thing about Harold, oh, <laughs> well, looks like we might be going up against a mirror match because uh, who else would play Garoff in their deck? Anyway, the cool thing about playing Harold the Orange Light is, okay, we draw another Raikou. The cool thing about playing Harold the Orange Light is like worse comes to worse, he's a tuner. So even if you can't resolve Harold of Orange Light effect, like, you can just use them to give Lightsworn that extra edge that they need. And being able to make... Uh, wow, that was really good. All right, so JD's, JD's coming out this turn, for sure. JD's coming out this turn. Oh, and we hit the wolf, too. And we hit the wolf, too. My God. All right, so let's check how many names that is. Uh, that is three names. And... Yeah, we definitely can't do anything because we can't sack for Celeste, unfortunately. Um, we're going to think here. We can make a Brio and then doesn't really do much. Honestly, I think it's just best to just not do anything and guard against Gores. So we're going to battle phase and we're going to swing with both. And if he drops Gores here, that's exactly what we want. Even though we do have Herald of Orange Light. Okay, Trigodia, same shit. Same shit. Even though we do have Herald of Orange Light to negate an effect. Uh, basically, what we want to do is we want to mill. Uh, and I, I mean, I attack with Raikou first, but I mean, that's fine. That's definitely fine. I'm okay with him taking more damage. All right, so we're going to mill our four. Yeah, and we're happy. We're very, very happy. So, uh, good luck, my guy. Good luck. Because we got the double J Dizzle ready to drop down. 
I don't think uh, I don't think Jason's ready. I don't think Jason's ready to deal with not one but two, two JDs. And uh, the cool thing is, now we obviously have access to uh, to Brionic, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We're gonna go for the Brio play. And uh, yep, that's four names: Brio, Double J, Dizzle. Oh, I definitely did not want to attack. I just literally said what I wanted to do, and I guess accidentally hit battle phase. I mean, that's that's the thing that sucks about playing with um you know a simulator. Sometimes you you press the wrong button. Obviously, I wouldn't just summon Herald just to attack for 300 damage. That's oh boy, that's frustrating. That's very very frustrating. Um anyway. And we still have to do the play anyway because, oh man, that's so frustrating. My God, you know, the limitations of dueling book, the limitations of dueling book. It's like, I love dueling book because, you know, gives you an opportunity to stream, gives you an opportunity to watch your replays, but there's nothing like IRL Yu-Gi-Oh. Like playing Yu-Gi-Oh in real life, is just so much better. I mean, once again, dueling book definitely. Um, all right, I'm just not even gonna calm your tits, buddy. Calm your tits. Put that honest back in your hand. Yeah. Yes. Come on. So anyway, um, dueling book definitely allows a lot of interesting opportunities, but like, there's just nothing like playing good old fashioned Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, we're going against the mirror match. Uh, so. Against the mirror match, Thunder King's actually pretty decent. Stops JD. But we're actually going to go with our boy Kaiko. Because we want to hit those names out the grave. And you know what? Actually, instead of Kaiko, we're just going to go with Soul Release and Thunder King. And we're going to drop these two. Even though Cold Wave is actually pretty decent. And um, yeah, we're going to side out this. And that's that's it. That's how we're going to rock out. One, two, three, four. That's exactly how we're going to rock out. Jaten. Do you believe in the power of Judgment Dragon? I mean, I mean, I guess obviously he does, right? Come on, come on, Jaten. Let's go. Go, Jaten. Go, Jaten. Go. Go, Jaten. Go, Jaten. Go. All right, so we won that game without dropping a JD. And this is another thing, right? A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players, they say Wolf is a dead draw. But, like, yeah, it sucks drawing Wolf, but you play three solar recharges. Like, for every Wolf you have, you also have a solar recharge. Moreover, oh, that's great. That's that's great. That's actually just great. Um, hmm. So here, it's like, do we even want to start for the J Dizzle? Probably not. Honestly, probably start for the charge. Um, let's see. He could have a Raiko set. Raiko set would be really annoying. So my read is a Raiko. I mean, he could have Hamtaro, but my read is definitely a Raiko. So we're going to summon this and swing. Okay, cool. Good reads. Good reads. All right, main phase two. Can you imagine if Lumina could get from either player's graveyard? That would just be busted. All right, anyway. We're going to Gold Sark. Uh, yeah, so JD is a good choice, obviously, but I have JD in the grave for beckoning. Soul Release is good, too, because it kind of forces him to go on a clock. But the problem is he already has two names, and I think he'll definitely get four within two turns. So uh, I don't really want to start for Soul Release, and it also takes away the Surprise element. So I'm going to start for Charge, um, because Charge helps me in the mill, right? I'm not going to set Beckoning, because actually I am, because I have three and three. So I'm just going to set Beckoning, and if it gets MST or Lila, then we just chain it. Um, yeah. So we're going to be good either way. Going to be Gucci either way. But... Okay, so he, and good. So his hand's pretty dead if he's summoning Honest and he's attacking. Like, that's fine. I'm going to take that. Uh, which means I don't even have to be offensive on my turn, right? So I don't even have to go Luna into Wolf. I can just go set Hamtaro and pass. So draw. Okay, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, and I'm just going to stick to the plan. Just set Hamtaro and pass. And I'm assuming this is like a beckoning set. But he can't activate Beckoning because he has only three targets in his grave and five cards in his hand. All right, now, Wolf into Celeste here would be savage. It would be savage. Yep, that's unfortunate. All right, so that's why we're going to go ahead. 
and this is exactly why we uh chart we start for uh charge a light brigade right so now our jd can be live all right we're gonna take this we're gonna take this we're not gonna take a wolf be a cold day in hell all right so anyway all this shit goes to the grave he mills four all right so now his beckoning is for sure live um we know he has honest in his hand so it's good for him um he's checking his grave for names he does have four he has more than four rather but he'd be dumb to you know drop jd okay one two three okay gets three of his own jd honest okay cool so he's just gonna go for a lot of damage oh no he's not even gonna do that okay cool cool this herald of orange light <laughs> i need you to do the most next turn all right so we draw Ooh, and that's gonna help that is gonna help out a lot all right speaking of cards that need to do the most charge please please charge please okay that did not do the most all right so we could charge for garoff and let's think about what we can do here right we have a total of two names right we got two names we got celestia got wolf uh we can easily put in a third and fourth name right because we could charge for garoff which probably is the best card to charge for at this point so we could charge for garoff that's what we're going to go ahead and do and then we can make miss worm so miss worm is 25 right and then we could drop jd which is 3000 uh and then let's see bang bang stack for miss worm hmm it's not very good we need one more card in our hand because we know that he has jd double honest right and the jd's live so what we could do is go luma garoff and stack jd but then we lose our jd uh, this is really awkward. Really, really, really awkward. All right, big think. So we can go Lumina Garoff and we can make Brio. So that'd be 23, 1,000, and 3,000. So let's see, how much damage is that? At least he's cool about it. So I'm happy about that. 3,000, 23, and 1,000 is 63. So then that would drop him down to 17, which means he can only JD once. All right. Honestly, I think this is just the best play. Summon Lumina, effect, get Garoff. All right, Lumina Garoff. And then it's like, I can just end, or I can actually just attack Oh, boy, it's very, very awkward. I'm just going to end, and I'm going to see how he plays. So end phase, mill five. That's not what we wanted to mill. That's literally probably the worst, some of the worst mills we could have did. Uh, wow, that's pretty savage. <laughs> that's pretty savage damn oh boy damn did not see a brain control set of all cards uh okay anyway i don't think there's anything i can do because if he's smart he just doesn't even pay a thousand he just runs over and then just attacking his game and i can't honest because if i honest and i can't orange light yeah it's like really really awkward yeah he's got it he's got it he's got it he's got it so for those of you who don't know right honest versus honest it's very complicated but the short easy way to keep track of it is turn player is always going to win uh all you have to do is if you're a turn player drop your honest in you know the last stage of damage calc and you'll win so turn player always wins when it's honest versus honest um 
if you're going to be against someone who doesn't know what they're doing, you can kind of trick them and get them to drop their Onish during damage step instead of damage calc. But yeah, Honest versus Honest, turn player will, will win. Whoever drops their Honest last is the winner. That's the easy way to remember. All right, so anyway, this hand, we're just going to set Raikou and pass. It's pretty simple. I like that we open up with Soul Release because now we don't have to worry about him like doing crazy stuff with his graveyard. Um, and we also got the Card Trooper too. I mean, our hand's really good at countering, right? But the problem is our hand isn't really good at being offensive. So that's the part that sucks. All right, so we're going to go ahead, mill three. All right, we mill Arcus. I love that guy. I'm a big Arcus fanboy. I'm a big fan of Arcus. And Arcus is especially good in the mirror match as well. All right, so it doesn't matter about the names because we don't have, um, you know, Jay Dizzle. All right, cool. He just takes both. No Trag, no Gorus. You love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, okay, you're good. Cool. He corrected it. Solar Recharge, that was definitely needed, I'm sure. It's really cool to see another guy playing pure, well, close to pure Lice Warren, right? I was about to say pure, and then I saw a Chaos Sorcerer, so there goes that. Uh, I could orange light this, but like that would just be the dumbest shit ever, because milling is a cost, right? So milling is a cost. Oh, whew. my God. Damn. I definitely didn't want to see that. That is a bit unfortunate. That is a bit unfortunate. Oh, uh, yeah. 19. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. And this is uh, 15. And we're going to go ahead and draw. Cool. Coolio. Coolio. Definitely Coolio. All right. So we're going to go ahead and charge first because we don't want to solo recharge and draw a card that we could have charged into. So we're just going to charge for Illuminato. And watch. I'm sure we're going to mill JD first with my luck. Okay. No, no, we did it. So that's fine. All right. So we're going to charge. Get our girl Lumina. She's out here doing big things, big things. Going to go ahead and get this Woofy Poo out of our hand. Hopefully we draw into a Jay Dizzle. Oh, oh, whoa. Ask and you shall receive. Oh my God. Ask and you shall receive. So how many names is that? That's four. Ask and you shall motherfucking receive. Okay, let's check his grave. He has enough names, right? So we're gonna run over the wolf. So let's see, do we have game? If we summon JD, we pay a thousand. That's 3,000. Lumina is 4,000. And wolf is 6,000. And then obviously we have Herald to stop Gores or whatever. So three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's game. Double check, we got four names. All right, so we're gonna drop J Dizzle and just go for game. He better have some good shit. All right. Summon our girl Illuminato. We don't need this card destruction because we're going for game. Okay. So battle phase. Crack. JD first because, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If he's checking his grave, that's just game then. Yeah. All right. GG. GG, GG. All right. Not a bad first set. The mirror match. Very rare to see the mirror match. But we're going to continue this on. We're going to continue this on to see if it's our, our lucky day. Because, like I said, the purpose of this video was to get somebody to rage. To get somebody to call me a sack. You know what I mean? If you guys haven't already checked out my video of what your deck says about you, Lightsworn Edition, check it out. Check it out. You know? A little bit of, little bit of um, you know, video candy for you. You know? You would love it. You would love it. You would love it. But yeah, so Lightsworn is definitely a really powerful deck. Um, JD is just ridiculously broken and like JD makes the deck like light swarms, their individual effects are good, but because they rely on milling, it's not consistent. Right. But JD really like puts the deck together because JD is such a broken card that like, could you imagine it in any other archetype? Can you imagine black wings if they had JD? Oh my God. That would just be, that would just be ridiculous. Also, it's kind of funny, speaking of Black Wings, that even in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, Black Wings are still getting support. Anyway, we open up really good. Um, hmm. We don't even need to recharge here. 
uh, because setting Raikou is just good enough. So actually, we're just not going to recharge. We're just going to set Raikou and we're going to end. And if he, if our opponent sets a monster, then we go next turn, Cold Wave, Sack Celestia. Okay, yep. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Um, yeah, that's literally what I wanted to see. Uh, it just sucks, though, because I do want to mill, actually, with... Okay. We're going to do this. We're going to Cold Wave, though he doesn't have any back rows, because we're going to go for a big, big play. So we're going to Cold Wave, and we're going to flip this up. And we're just going to just mill. All right. Because we're going to try to kill him. So bang, bang, bang. We mill three. Sack. Celestia. And then we have, uh, of course, you know. Uh, all right. Mill four. All right. So did we get four? One, two, three. No, we didn't. We got three. Very unfortunate. Aaron... Raiko, Lila. Yeah, that's three. So, of course, we can force a, um, we could force a JD by putting Celeste in the grave, but honestly, there's no point in doing all that. We're just going to hit for 23, and, like, this dude's in a bad situation. So, he, okay. Hmm. Think. So, here, honestly, I'm okay with him dropping Gores. Because, I mean, I definitely said think. I'm okay with him dropping Gores here because I have Honest, right? Of course, I could just Herald of Orange Light and get rid of the Gores entirely. But, like, yeah. So, here, if he is, like, I don't really care. So, I'm going to Herald of Orange like this. Boom. Boom. So, that shit dies. Okay. Yep. We're going to let him run over this. Uh, that'll give us the fourth name. So, that's 400. We, of course, we have Gartna, but we want four names. So, now his Gores is gone. Oh, and we draw our Gores, which is nice. And, uh, yeah, good luck, my guy. Good luck, my guy. Don't have to worry about Gores. Don't have to worry about Gores. And we have a Gartna to protect the JD as well. So, yep, good luck. You can't handle another JD. All right, so, yep. Oh, oh Wolfie Poo. <laughs> right on time. Wolfie poo. Cool. So he used Gorus, he used Caius. He can set back rows now, but like, yeah, this is the only one that, that kind of hurts, right? Is brain control. But he needs a monarch. Like he needs another Caius to follow through, right? Battle phase. Um obviously we'll just let this this rod out. Like we don't really care. It's fine. If he gives us back our JD, then it's over. Okay. Sack for the Stalas. Oh, uh, interesting. Let's see. Let me check something. If this card, one card, then if it was a monster card, if like damage to your opponent equals to life points. Oh, interesting. Let's see. When you take... Yeah, because... So, okay. So, this just goes to the grave. So, I was trying to see if I could activate Gore's effect, right? But I can't because... Of the order that everything happens in. So I cannot. Alright, draw. Excellent draw. Excellent draw. Excellent draw. <laughs> well, that's that was fucking savage. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. You wanna talk about Lysworn's fucking sacking people? Oh my god. Alright, so anyway, here let's think about what we could do. Uh, we can summon, make Brio, bounce. We could just go brain control. Simple. Let's just do brain control and go for game. He brain controlled us. Let's brain control him. And put an end to his shenanigans. Alright, good. Hunt Master. So he's playing, it looks like, Monarchs. Uh, so what do we have against Monarchs? Honestly, I think this is just fine. Because I didn't see the frog version, so we don't want to put in Kaikos or Thunder Kings. You know, obviously Kaikos to stop the Treeborns and things like that. Thunder King just, he's just raw power. And not only that, but he can stop special summons. But it looks like he's just playing just regular Monarchs. So, hmm. Our Hunt Master is l more looking like a Hunt Apprentice, you know. Anyway, <laughs> that was whew, very savage. Brain Control is so nutty. 
Can we do something about brain control, guys? Can we do something about brain control? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, pure light sworns take another one. Um, the deck, as you can see, is really good. It's really good. Uh, Christian sworns still being better, but pure light sworns don't sleep. Don't sleep. Don't fall asleep on it. Don't fall asleep. All right. So this hand definitely average. Uh, it depends how well he opened up, right? Because this isn't a bad hand, but this is also not like the ideal light, light sworn player hand. Like you want to open up charge and recharge, <laughs> but you know, we didn't get any of those cards. Good thing is we got gold Sark. So with this hand, we definitely want a gold Sark for a charge. And we want to hope that his set monster isn't a Raikou. All right. So only play we have is here. Sark for charge. Now, what we could do as a super pro play, set beckoning at end. And by setting beckoning at end, if he has Raikou, then he'll flip Raikou and he'll hit the beckoning, right? Um, I'm not going to do that, though. I'm going to just set Hamster, and I'm going to say that his his monster is in a Raikou, and he's not going to summon a Monarch. I'm just going to... This, is, this are a bunch of prayers. Like, I'm saying a bunch of prayers. And look at that. Look at that. Always trust your instincts. Always trust your instincts. Oh, man. If I set the beckoning. Uh, good thing is Gorge is gone. So I guess he has a Pastalis. That's probably why, like, he just flipped up the Raiko. Now that we know he's playing that card. I mean, it's, it's a really good card, right? I call him the Usher Monarch. Pastalis the Usher Monarch. I need you to let it burn. Anyway. Um... But I'm also okay with a Raikou just sitting there. All right, cool. Does nothing. Draw, dead card, and And that's why this charge is about to go ham taro. And speaking of going ham taro, speaking of going ham taro, it just sucks that we can't like do a cold wave because we're going to need both of our spells next turn to play the game. Because I would love to go cold wave at the start of next turn. And like because he's in battle phase, we know he's not going to kill us. So we just kind of got to hope that he doesn't stack for Thalus because we kind of need every card in our hand. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, he did a normal summon because that's Raikou. So cool. All right, we're good. So he just doesn't care about JD. He just doesn't care about JD coming to fuck his day up. Uh, yeah, so I think we have zero names, right? Yeah, we have zero. But it, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. So we're just going to charge for gear off. Uh, cause we're just going to recharge them right away. Our win condition here is, um, JD. So we're going to charge for Garoff and we're going to get rid of him. We play one Garoff, so that's a name in the grave for sure. See, now he's scared. Now he's scared of the graveyard. Now he's scared. All right. I mean, that kind of sucked. That sucks already. Yeah. Like that was not good. All right. So we have two names, two names, two names, and we're sad because this hand still doesn't do anything. All right, let me think. Let me think. We can't set Honest because we know he has Raikou. We could set Beckoning, but we can't even chain it because we only have three targets in the grave. Uh, we can make a level six, uh, but then that sets us back a turn, so that's not really good here. So honestly, I think we just kind of got to set Beckoning and just pray. Like, yeah, we just didn't get there off of the mills. So we set Beckoning and we pray. We're all Bon Jovi style. We're living on a prayer. Yeah, like we're halfway there. We're living on a prayer. And our next draw has has to be a light sworn. It has to be a light sworn, right? Like we gotta pull. Yeah, that's fine. You're all good, dude. I'm getting beat down by Rikos and hamsters. Oh, thank goodness he can't uh, get his dandelion effect. Tostalis, I'm sure. Yep. That's fine. We'll see what he targets. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and just be like Naji. Naji. All right. Yeah. We can't afford to take that big damage. Go ahead. Goodbye. 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 That's your normal summon. So attack for 11. Yep. Okay. Okay. Another shot. Another shot at victory. Light swarm. One time. Oh, baby, I've never been so happy to see you, Wolf. I've never been so happy to see you. 
Oh, yes. Give me the name. Give me the name, baby. Yes, yes. That should be four. One, two, three, four. Yes, baby. Yes. All right. So we can't cold wave. We can't have any storm. So we're just going to go ahead and drop Big Daddy JD. We know he doesn't have Gores because he milled it. So he better have Dragodia for his sake. Mm-hmm. Dandy, two tokens. I mean, yeah, we're just not going to play around with that foolery. We're just going to go ahead hit him for another stack. All right, so here, let's see. We can go summon Lumina, uh, pitch for Lila. We're just going to go for a lot of damage, right? Summon Lumina, effect. It might be game. We'll see. I'm not doing the math in my head. So actually, I should do the math in my head. So let's do this right. Uh, Lumina, JD, Lila, Plague, 61. So we'll be at 19. And um, I could do Tempest for an additional 1,000. So it would be 71. So that means he will be down to uh, 900. So let me just double check. Lumina's 1,000. JD's 3,000. Uh, Lila is 17. Plague is 461. And then I'll have two counters. So 71. Yeah, it's not enough. So we're just going to do Lumina Garoff. All right, battle phase, attack with JD first, guards against Tragodia. Okay, yep. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, yeah, so we're actually just not gonna pay here. I mean, we're definitely gonna enter main phase too, that's for sure. Um, we're not gonna pay here because we want our Lumina Garoth to do the most. Um, also, I don't see him taking it. We have not milled a Gardner. So, yeah, we should be fine. JD first. All right. So, slash mill. So, it'd be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, we're going to mill nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. And then we draw one because Garoff. And then we'll also special summon this wolf. All right, cool. Coolio, Coolio, Coolio. Coolio, Coolio. So yeah, he has to deal with this Jay Dizzle. Um, and as long as he doesn't take it, like, I don't know what level eight he's going to drop, you know? He ain't playing Christian. So if he can't deal with this Jay Dizzle, he's in for a bad time. But I mean, of course, fucking brain control again. When, when are we going to do something about this card? When are we going to do something about this card? I mean, the fact that he pays benefits me, but god damn, when are we going to do something about this card? Oh, man, that shit's so annoying. So, I mean, he probably forgot that I milled Necro. Um, or maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm definitely not going to take 3k, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, like that's a that's a, gotta say the name, my brother. I gotta say the name. Mhm. Mm he didn't even attack with three hundred, but whatever. All right, Black Rose blow up. I'm sure. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. That's fine. This is why. This is why ugh, Cold Wave is so good. You're good, dog. All right. Anyway. Yes, yes, two tokens. Yes, yes, we know. Cause this is why Cold Wave is so good. Oh my God, it's just it just gets worse and worse. It just gets worse and worse. But I mean, there was no way that I could Cold Wave, so I mean, it is what it is. And we got to worry about the threat of Gores again. So anyway, that's one, two, three. That's four, and last but not least, five. Shuffle, shuffle. Get some good Yugi's. All right. The good thing is if we draw like a good card, <laughs> that's not the card we wanted to draw at all. All right, uh, did we mill all our wolves? Let's check. We got one wolf in the grave. Oh, oh, one wolf. Oh no, two wolves, two wolves in the grave, two wolves. Sorry, I overlooked that, overlooked, overlooked. If we mill a wolf, whoa, 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 whoa. 
whoa, 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 whoa. Let's uh, do this right. Let's do this right. Can we get a wolf? Can we get a wolf? Wolf, 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 wolf. Yes, we can, baby. Yes, we can. Hashtag Barack. Yes, we can. All right. So does that make, does that change anything? Um, Big think, big think. So we got the guy that does piercing, right? So that'd be 21 direct. Uh, 21 and 19. That would be game, right? Stack for, let me think. Stack for plague. No, it's not game. Stack for plague. Make that guy. Yeah, we need another monster on the field. Uh, big think. We have, um, what's that card called? Mistworm. Mistworm doesn't do anything. Uh -huh. Damn, those tokens save his booty. They saved his booty. So it's like, we got this guy. That does 21. And he's already out of brain control range. So honestly, I think I'm not going to do anything. I could stack McBrio, right? Stack McBrio, but then I only have one card. Brio bounce. Yeah, it's the same situation either way it goes. So we're just going to go attack, attack. Yeah, and we're just going to chill here. I think he loses because he needs to out this board without the use of spells or traps. Of course, if he has another... <laughs> of course, if he has another debris. Of course, if he has another debris. Okay, Iron Chain... Oh, God. That's so freaking annoying. Oh, God. Anyway, it's not a game, but boy, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to take 21 here. I draw and I mill three. Yeah, I get it. He's trying to mill me out. All right, that's fine. Boy. All right, draw the last card. What a complete dead card. So we have to win with this hand. All right, dual puzzle, dual puzzle time. So we do have access to Brio, obviously. Um, so we can go like stack for plague, make Brio, doesn't do anything. Um, hmm. We also could just go stack for plague, make Brio, attack 23, and then tell him the deal, which honestly I think is the best play. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Put a card on the top of the deck. We obviously don't need this heavy storm. Make this plague. All right, and then we make Brio, and then we bounce. And then I wonder, actually, we make Brio bounce and Colossal. Would Colossal be game here? That's actually a good choice. Good, good question. So let's check. Uh, how many warriors do we have? I have one with Jane. I have two with Garof. All right, so that's two. So Colossal's at 3,000. And we need two more warriors. Is that all I have? Is Jane, oh, okay, Aaron as well. So that's 31. So Jane, what's this? Yeah, Aaron, Garof, Jane. So 29, 30, 31. So we need 100 more. Do we have another warrior? No, we don't, but does he? Uh, no, quick draws a machine. All right, no, we don't have a game. Yeah, he doesn't have any, yeah. Checking for something. All right, yeah, and this is a beast warrior. Okay, so cool. So it'd be 29. All right, so it's not game either way. All right, cool. So we're gonna go ahead, this, make our boy Bree Bree. All right, declare, doesn't really matter. Get rid of this. Okay. Uh, yeah, normal summon synchro. And yeah, so we just swing for 23. And then we end. 
and we pray. Okay. Main phase two. Obviously, you get rid of both. Cool, 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 cool. So he needs another debris to save him. Uh, honestly, not really just debris. There's a lot of cards he could pull. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a choice. This is uh, uh there's only one thing I can do. Like, I gotta go for a game here. And like, if I lose because he has a battle trap, like, I mean, that just okay. Cool, we win. Okay, all right, we win. We win. We win. We're taking it. We're taking it, baby. All right. Last set. Last set against Cassia. If he wants to play. All right. He does. He does. He does. This will be our last guy. All right. GLHF. Oh, I screamed it. <laughs> Caps lock. You know, when you're calling against someone, Caps lock. Good luck. Have fun. No, it's, it's not. It's not like all that. We're, we just, we just playing Ukes here, you know. Just trying to get lucky. Play a little light swarms. Play a little light swarms. All right. So anyway, our opening hand is not good. Thank you for wishing me good luck. Go ahead and draw your sixth card and let let the games begin. Let the games begin. Uh, honestly, this kind of hand, oh boy. If I'm going against Dark Greffer, like you know, like he's going against a turbo deck. Like any deck that plays Dark Greffer is trying to kill you. They are trying to kill you. Like more so than any other deck, right? Of course, every deck essentially wants to win, but Dark Greffer is like turbo. Like, they're trying to kill you on crack. So, ah, uh, boy. And this is not a turbo hand. Like, this is not a turbo hand. Um, Yeah, like, none of these cards are helpful. So, hmm, we need to think. We can summon Lila, and we... Yeah, okay. This is kind of what we got to do. We got to hope that that back row is not real. All right, come on, dueling book, dueling book, dueling book. I hear lagging. Uh, no prio. DB lagging. All right, so no prio, DB lagging. Yeah, so pretty much our our play here is to summon Lila, attack over his. Um, arm wing, card destruction, set beckoning, and that's uh, pretty much our play. So it's like if he has something to stop Lila, then like it sucks. Okay, the bitch don't ask me if I have fucking prior. All right, anyway, so we're gonna attack this guy. We're gonna act if it's good. Deep prison, okay, that sucks. Uh, yeah, so we just gotta go ahead and card destruction anyway and hope that we get some good cards. All right, so we need four, we get four. Damn, that sucks. That heavy would have helped. That heavy would have fucking helped. That heavy would have fucking helped. But you know, how could how could we have known? We, we had a plan. We had a plan. And like now, like I said, turbo deck. Like now we're about to take a lot of damage. Let's just say like that. Now we're about to take a lot of damage. Um, honestly, it's probably just game. If he's doing like all this, because right now he's going to make a level eight and then he's going to make a level, um, you know, use his, his, uh, his arm wing and his value to make, you know, level seven. So yeah, this, this is, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. So he gets a level eight, probably colossal. I'd assume because colossals, okay, stardust. Definitely not what I would have went with, but you know, it's all good. It's all Gucci. I would have went with Colossal, especially against uh, Light Swarms. It's really good. All right. Um. Yeah. So draw. I don't think I have four names, right? Yeah. So this is pretty much uh, just GG no re because he has Stardust. So we're just gonna go ahead and yeah, concede. We're just gonna go and concede. Damn. Are we gonna take an L on the last one? I hope not. Definitely not going to put an oppression against that deck. That's for sure. Um, yeah, we're just going to keep a light side. We're not going to go too heavy. Like one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, definitely going to get rid of this Jane. Jane is playing. I'm going to get rid of Celestia. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Harold. I don't really think Harold's like super great against this deck. I mean, 
at the right time, right? It could be really useful, but anyway, we're gonna do like this. I'm gonna do like this. And like I said, Dark Refer decks, they're turbo decks. Like they're trying to kill you like faster than any other type of deck. Um, the cool thing is here, like this hand is pretty decent as long as we don't get crossed out. Uh, if we get crossed out, then a true hero is going to be sad. A true hero is going to be crying. Like it's going to be, it's going to be a sad day, sad day. But you know, if we don't get crossed out, if all is good in the hood, then we're happy. We're happy. So it's like, I doubt I'm going to be able to pull off the Celestia unless I'm mill a wolf because this is such an aggro deck. Veil Turbo is such an aggro deck. Like they're not going to set any monsters. Like what are you going to set a Veil? Like they're, they're not going to do that. So his deck's really aggro. So I severely doubt. And the fact that he's special summoning Dark Refer is scary, man. This is scary, Terry. Like my, my face down monster is very obvious. So I'm assuming he's going to, yeah, I was about to say. I'm assuming he's either going to pitch a plague or send a plague, right? Because he wants to go for uh, Stardust play, which it's it's good. Like, can't knock it. Um, I assume, right? I assume he's going to go for a Stardust play. If he does go for a Stardust play, the good thing is he gets set back a turn and I still get the mill. So it's not the end of the world, like, if he summons Stardust. Okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he's going for a Stardust play definitely not putting things in the right order but it doesn't matter it's like you know we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players here so i'm just gonna go ahead and mill my three no no effect okay youtube so my obs just doesn't want me to be great and it cut out in the middle of the set so here we are with a recording to show you what happened games two and three all right so i was right he went for a starters play and he got super aggro so nothing really I can do but just try to mill and make JD live. And um, he sucks Armor Master Stardust. So it's like, I'm in a really bad situation and all I can do is keep milling, keep milling, keep milling. And like, he was supposed to win the game. Cause here, I have three names in a grave. So I go Lumina, Pitch, Celestia to put the fourth one in the grave. And I have two choices, right? I can either bring back Raikou or I can bring back Lila. Now, the problem with bringing back Lila is when I activate Lila's effect, if he doesn't negate with Stardust, I still have three names in the grave. So by doing it this way, now I have four names in the grave and I could go for a heavy storm play. So I don't know what was going through his mind, especially looking at the replay, right? Like his back rows are legit. All he had to do is tribute Stardust to negate. But instead, he changed his uh, Icarus and he lets the heavy go through, leaving his Stardust defenseless. If he tributes Stardust to negate, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Even if I drop JD, like you have bottomless set. So there's no fear. Anyway, he misplayed and now his Stardust is naked, you know, and JD came and took advantage. Big Daddy JD, he doesn't play around. And obviously he couldn't out the JD, right? So pay a thousand, clear his back row, summon Kaiko. And that was it. That was it. Misplays, misplays. So anyway, game three. So now game three, we open up pretty good. And we look at our opening hand. And here, we want to charge for chart. We want to Sark rather for charge of Liper Gate. Because look at our hand. We got double recharge. But I'm just like, there's no way that we don't pull a Light Sworn in two turns. There's no way. Like, I just can't justify Sarking for Charge the Light Brigade when I have double recharge in my hand. So I'm like, what card is gonna mess him up? And it, obviously it's between Heavy Storm or Cold Wave. So my logic at this point is like, okay, I'm gonna draw into a Light Sworn and then eventually I'll be able to like Cold Wave JDM. So I Sark for Cold Wave. So I Cold Wave, Sark into Cold Wave and I set Consecrated. The reason why I set Consecrated is because if he has Solemn Judgment set and I summon Consecrate it, I'm sad. Like, that's it. Like, he, he's able to out-Consecrate it, right? And, like, looking at his back rows, he did indeed have Solemn Judgment set, right? So if I go summon Consecrate it, then, like, I lose. So anyway, so I set Consecrate it, and now, like, Consecrate it is a problem for him. But the thing about Black Wings is, I know with a Black Wing deck, or rather Value Turbo and 5 back row, he has Icarus Attack, which means at any point in time, he can out my board. He can out my board by 
tributing his arm wing and getting run, rid of one of his cards and one of my cards, or when eventually I commit a second card to the field because I have to if I want to win, he Icarus attacks at that point, right? So this Consecrated Light is only delaying the inevitable. And look, like he's he has every back row like Blackwing players, Veyu players dream of. Like he's all poised to win. So anyway, I draw for turn, dead card, draw Cold Wave, and I couldn't believe within two turns of Yu-Gi-Oh, I haven't pulled a single Light Sworn in the Light Sworn deck. So end phase, I have to pitch Plague because once again, if I commit two cards to the field, he goes Icarus attack and then I just lose, right? So he draws and he sets. And I look at this hand and I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? I draw a third solar recharge. Like that is not, that's not real. Like it's actually just not real. So I know that what he's doing is he's setting up so that he can kill me in one shot. He's eventually going to Icarus his own card, get rid of my consecrated, and then go for game. And if you look at my hand, I don't have Gorus, I don't have Trigodia, I don't have anything to stop an attack. Like I just get reamed, right? I just lose. So I'm like, I have to make a play now. So I set double recharge because like the reason why I don't set the third one is because I need to increase the chance of me pulling a light sworn, right? And honestly, if you resolve two solar recharges, like that's enough. Like three is just being like a little greedy, right? So I get rid of my hand, I draw four, I draw on the Wolfie Poo, which is amazing actually, because I have recharge. And then I draw onto the best two spells I could have asked for, right? So heavy storm and brain control. So this is literally perfect because now what I can do is go heavy and I have a read that he has road set. So he'll go road and then I'll go brain control on his Stardust, drop JD and like get him out the game, right? So at this point, I might as well recharge and get rid of, um, you know, uh, Lila. And I pull into some good shit, right? I pull in a charge light brigade. So I go for the play that I mentioned before, heavy, he has road, it's expected, brain control. And like... This player is really smart, right? Because what he does is he chains the blank control Icarus. And that's kind of like the only thing that he can do because if he didn't Icarus and get rid of his own Stardust, then he knows this JD will drop uncontested, right? So Icarus, charge, mill a wolf. That was literally the perfect mill. And now we go Lumina, pitch, get Lila. And he acts Pryo, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then he, he bottomlesses, right? Not a big deal. So our play now is to go for Miss Worm. If we make Miss Worm and we return both his back rows, drop JD, pay a thousand, he's like in a bad situation. So that's what we go for, right? Get Plague, ask him if it's good, make Miss Worm, he solemns, right? And then we drop the J Dizzle on him. We drop the J Dizzle on him and he quits. So, you know, we succeeded. You know, we didn't get our opponent to call us a savage or anything like that, but still, we managed to see Light Swarms take it 3 0, baby. 3 0. So anyway, until next time, guys, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, lets me know you enjoy the content, and until next time, a true hero out.